Hello and welcome to Films and That. My name's Rob Turnbull. And my name's Sam Hall. And today we are looking at Clio from 5 to 7. Clio follows two hours in the life of a singer as she waits for the results of a medical test as she fears she has cancer. This review contains spoilers. So the first thing to know about this film is it, it plays out in almost real time. The film is supposed to play out actually over the, an hour and a half, isn't it? Um, even though it's 5 to 7. Um, so it's a, uh, it's a bit of a lie. The whole film uh, is, is done from, uh, plays with the perspectives of time, both real time and, and that kind of, that sense of understanding of, uh, of an individual time, you know, how time sort of conflates and an hour can feel like forever. And certainly I do feel like this film feels like there's a lot going on in it, um, despite the fact that, that it's only an hour and a half and, and that it is, it's supposed to follow her life, um, in each detail, you know, including the bits that you would normally cut out, like, you know, traveling from one place to another. There's a nice bit in a cafe when she's with her friend or her manager who's talking to some other man, but then she doesn't listen to his, her conversation. She turns and listens to a, a pair having a conversation next to her. That epitomizes French New Wave. Yeah, it's, just it's, the camera it's just a moving common, to something else. Completely. It's a common trait of something like that, of the depth of field isn't within the scene. You know, it's not that you're looking at two things at once. You're, you're focused on the thing that isn't important, even to the plot. Mm. But it's important to her as a character, I guess, because um, her character is set up as being incredibly vain and mm. superficial. It seems like for the first time in her life, you know, maybe she is starting to notice what other people are up to around her, perhaps because she's questioning her own mortality. But at this point, I think I hadn't warmed to the character and, yeah. and the, the character was still being pushed away. It's very childlike as, as in that bit. Yeah, it's very, very childlike, like, a, you know, like a bit, a bit spoiled. In her apartment, she's just got kittens running around. She doesn't even acknowledge them. It's like, it's like just she needs them there just to be surrounded by beautiful things, <laughs> you know. And so she, she's quite unsympathetic at first, isn't she? Like, like all good films, you know turns you around and, and makes you sympathise with her and see things from her perspective. There is a definite point when she takes the artifice off, I think. Yeah. Literally, she takes a wig off that she's been that wearing for the whole film. octopus wig. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she takes that off, she puts on a black dress, she becomes more, um, more kind of depressing looking, yeah. more real, I think. Suddenly she just wants to reject everything that she is, you know, the, all, the, all that vain superficiality. We don't see her necessarily so much as the spoiled brat, more as the person who is, who doesn't really have anyone important in her life, mm. because they they don't really care about her needs. They just care about what they get from her as a celebrity. Mm. There is a scene later on when she is just she's in a cafe, isn't she? And she's another cafe, another cafe. <laughs> it's France, Paris, even yeah. yeah. <laughs> but she's looking around at everyone. She's on her own, and she just she's just watching everyone's conversation, isn't she? And she mm. she seems to not be able to cope with it. She she has to stand up and walk about. She can't just sit there amongst these people. She seems quite trapped and quite frightened by it all. Yeah, it seems like everything suddenly repulses her, and at the same time fascinates her. Although this film is about her in that two hours and how she deals with this underlining dread of this, this test that's looming over the whole time. We, I don't feel like that really matters at the end, what the test results are going to be, whether she has this disease or not. It's just about her journey through it. That's I, the most important thing. I was thing. almost surprised, actually, that we did find out the results of the yeah. test. We weren't, well, we better not say what they are. We can. Because well, spoilers, she actually finds out that she does have cancer. And then the doctor's just like, yeah, we'll give you two weeks of radiation. You'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Then yeah. he drives off and it's just it's quite it's quite a happy moment at the end. It's like this kind of relief sets in that she kind of. It is. I mean, I suppose we didn't see the story after that if there were complications, but <laughs> that's not really, but that's, that's, not, that's the point. not the point. No, it's just, just about her, how she deals with this situation, isn't it? Yeah. Coming to terms with it. <laughs> Oh, do you want to talk about, there's a, there's a nice, there's a sequence that's shown three times when she's walking down the stairs at the beginning. Yeah. Kind of repetition of a movement. It reminded me of a um, ballet mechanique. Do you remember that? Uh, what was that? It was a, an avant-garde film we watched at uni and it was just kind of people swinging on swings again oh, and again. Oh, okay, yeah. Just to kind of um, show the, the balleticness of movement. That's not a word, but I'm going to make it a word. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Balleticness. Balleticness. Well, for a start, it throws out the window the whole idea that it's real time <laughs> when yeah. we see time repeated. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Almost as if it's sort of saying, yeah, this isn't real time. <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> that is a very French new wave, actually, yeah. thinking about it. French New Wave really wanted to hammer home that kind of idea of, look, we can do anything, you know. Yeah. Just because someone's written a rule book doesn't mean we can't throw that rule book out the window. Yeah, they're like the, um, the cutting between black and white in colour and the tarot reading. Mm. So whenever you see the cars, they're in colour. But whenever you see Cleo or the tarot reader, when you ever see her face, it's in black and white. It's quite stark contrast to, to real life, I guess. To the point where when I watched the film again the other day, I texted you saying... Uh, I could have sworn this film was in black and white. <laughs> and then, of course, it was. You know? <laughs> it's, um, well, it's just showing that you've made a deliberate choice to do it in black and white. Because mm. you, you can do it in colour. You've obviously shown that. Yeah, I guess this, that's more obvious these days when it's a film like La Haine or... Um, Schindler's, Schindler's Hard List. Hard to be a god, Schindler's List. Yeah, when that, it, it's not necessarily... You don't have to hammer that point home because all films are in colour these days. So yeah. <laughs> if you just... By doing that, you're making a statement, aren't you? But in this case, you know, a lot of films were still in black and white in the 60s. I think because they went for the real-time thing, there were certain scenes when they were like, oh, what should we do now? And then they had to be creative and put things in there like that. You know, the, the taxi sequence, if you just cut from, oh, she got in a taxi and then she got out on the other end... You wouldn't have the, um, the taxi driver telling her story. You wouldn't have the radio giving the exposition about the Algerian War of Independence. Yeah, um, all that sort of setting the, the, the scene almost, you know, yeah. they're going, this is Paris, this is the world we live in. See, it's mm. forcing you to stay with these characters when they're not doing anything, when they are just sitting around and existing. Mm. So it's forcing you in that world. Really, for me, I think this film was... Although it is about perspective and about time, I also felt that a lot of it was about, you know, her arc as well as a character. Mm. The camera started out as being this kind of focus point on her and then um, slowly was starting to turn the camera around from her perspective more and see life from, from her view. Mm. The first maybe third of the film, a lot of the shots are just from far away of her walking around the street, aren't they? They're like yeah. up, up high in buildings looking down on her like someone was watching her. Mm. And then there are other scenes later on when she's walking around the street and it is her perspective and, and people are looking at the camera, aren't they? They're looking at her. They're always watching her. Yeah. So I noticed, that, yeah, in one particular scene when she's walking down the street, there's a lot of old women looking at her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's meant to sort of say like her revulsion to mortality, to old age, maybe. But she's, she's constantly being watched because she mm. is, perhaps because she is famous, because she is attractive. Mm. She gets a lot of attention from people, including men. Yeah. Throughout the film, men just seem to fall over themselves to try and get to her, don't they? Mm. There is even a bit when she's in the taxi, I think, and someone tries to chat her up yes. when they're driving alongside the taxi. Yes. I mean, it wasn't, like I say, it wasn't necessarily unwanted, mm. but um, at that time, it wasn't what she needed, no. at least. Well, in fact, actually, she, she does get the kind of attention she wanted from a man in the end. Towards the end, she, yeah. she meets a... a, a is he in the army? So is he yeah, a sailor? I, I think he's sort of about to go off to war. So I guess in, in a way he's fa facing a similar situation, you know, where he could be facing death soon, as she thinks she could be facing death. Um, uh, and she just gets that perspective she wants from him. I assume he's going off to fight the, the, um, the war of independence in Algeria at the time. Because he is in, a, is in a similar situation, he seems to be able to talk to her on her level. That is what she needed at that point, and that's quite a sweet moment towards the end of the film. Yeah. And it's the way he deals with it as well, you know, he, um, uh, he, he tries to make her laugh, you know, but not in a superficial way. Um, but I would like to, uh, there's something I did read um, that annoyed me a bit, where someone says that the, um, the, the kind of feminist aspect of the film was detracted from the fact that she found solace in a man in the end. Um, I, just, I just hate this idea that, you know, just, just because women aren't sex objects doesn't mean they don't have a sex life, you know. <laughs> She, she's still, that doesn't, she still likes men. She doesn't hate men. It's just, you know, she, she's longing for that, that. She wants companionship. Feminism doesn't have to be, not just equality, but just, just from a woman's perspective. You know, this is a film written, directed by a woman about a woman. And that's, that's all you really need, I think, for it to be a, a feminist film. It's, it's not, it goes beyond that for me. I think it's quite a matriarchal society. All the women seem to have positions of power. One of the taxis she gets into is driven by a woman mm. who then has this like, big complicated story about 
her life and how it is to be a woman as a taxi driver. And then she gets in a taxi later on and it's driven by a man and he just seems quite disinterested with the world. He seems quite stupid. For me, I didn't necessarily feel like men didn't have power in this, but more that it just didn't pretend that women aren't involved in life. I do see what you mean, and because because all the men, they're, they're at her feet, aren't they? Mm. The only man that I can tell that isn't single-minded is the soldier at the end. He's not trying to get in there quickly and get out like everyone else is. Yeah. Which even the doctor, he's just kind of like, he stops, doesn't he? He's in his car, he says something to her, then gets out quickly. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. The, <laughs> to me, that's absurd. Maybe, yeah. I don't know, maybe... <laughs> Maybe some doctors do have to do that. <laughs> yeah. It's quite some big news, isn't it, really? You know? He doesn't even get out of his car, does he? It's no, like, he literally oh, yeah, just got drives cancer. up to her, like a drive-by test cancer. result. <laughs> <laughs> drive-by cancer. So, Sam, what did you think of Cleo from five to seven? I liked it. I preferred it more the second time I watched it. Mm. Um, maybe the first time I watching it, I was sort of watching it rather passively. And then I actually found I got more enjoyment out of engaging with it um, and thinking about the significance of each moment. Uh, it's clearly a film that has been built uh, where each, every aspect of it, you know, has been thought about. You know, there's no there's no one moment, you know, that isn't significant in some way or another. So that that for me is is one of the appeals of the film. It's interesting you say that. I think if you don't pay attention, you, it can be quite a boring film because you don't realise that the the things like the radio have importance, so you don't listen to them. It, it, some things are kind of shown as being in the background a lot of the time and you have to look around and pay attention to what's going on in the scene. Yeah. And if you don't, you're going to miss things, so you really need to be pay attention to this film, which is it's quite a clever film in that regard. Yeah, which is, I guess is what doesn't make it escapism. But yeah, it is, it is from the perspective of a, of a woman. And I think that's very interesting to see. It's very refreshing to see. Mm. And for me, I think that's what sets this film apart from other French New Wave films at the time. I'm a big French New Wave fan, but this one, it's just, it cemented itself in my memory. I don't know why, mm. but I mean, I watched it at the time. I watched like um, Breathless and all them films, but this one just stands out for me. Okay, that's it for this time on Films on That. Thanks for watching and subscribing. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.